Hi, I got a press release yesterday from Xtech because I follow uh, Xtech's um, stuff and this thing popped up and it was rather bizarre, unusual. I've never seen anything like this before. So I thought I'd just mention it. It's um, a, well here it is, Xtech adds safety to high voltage testing with the first ever laser non-contact laser test probes. Go figure. And uh, it says here the new LP100 series laser probes leverage existing laser voltage probe designs with voltage and timing waveform acquisition technology previously only available at the scale intended for flip chip integrated circuit analysis. I had no idea you could even measure voltage at a distance with a laser. Go figure. And in addition to some marketing blah blah bullshit they got in here. There's one, it says one laser acquires waveforms from the electrical source while the other laser creates a reference to eliminate unwanted noise from the signal data that is acquired. And if you take a look at the photo here, it actually shows uh, a red laser coming out, but it actually says in here that it's um, infrared. So they've obviously got like a dual um, laser, just like those laser thermometer uh, things work. The, you've got to have a red a visible red laser to actually you know, show your target that you're actually um, targeting on. So the red laser does nothing but it would have another, presumably have another infrared laser in there, separate dye or something like that, uh, laser dye to, um, to one for uh, measurement and one for actually aligning um, to show what you're actually targeting. Because if you couldn't see it then you'd just be pointing it in the air and you wouldn't, you know, if it's a couple of feet away, five, six feet away, you wouldn't be able to know exactly what you're targeting. Whew. Anyway, um, I have no idea how this thing works at all. I haven't got a clue. But thankfully, the new EEV blog apprentice, Phil, has a PhD in laser physics and he's tried to uh, figure out exactly how it works and he may have cracked it. Maybe. Thumbs up. Let's go, Phil. All right, Phil, you reckon you cracked it? What's well, going on? They don't give us enough. Give us a lot of detail. Phil's voice is a little bit better, by the way. If getting you better. Heard it last time, he had an operation, it's getting there. So they don't give us a lot of detail, except that they're using two lasers to for noise reduction and that, but hmm. it still doesn't explain how they do it. What I think they could be doing is possibly using the Faraday effect, Faraday rotation through an air space. So they have their <clears throat> laser, which is a polarized laser, traveling through an airspace. It has some dielectric strength. And if you apply a high magnetic field to that, you get a rotation of that polarization. Right. Because I spoke to Xtech and they said that it does have a maximum distance, of course, of a couple oh, yes. of feet. So you wouldn't you wouldn't yep. get much. Right. Um, because the magnetic field strength would drop off very quickly. Right. You don't have a small interaction length, so you wouldn't be able to get too far away from it. Yep. The closer you can get would be better, but right. there'd be an optimum distance. Though. Because it's designed for high voltage. This only yeah. works at, Xtech told me it only, gave them a quick email. They didn't know all the technical details, but it only works at like hundreds of thousands of volts. It's designed for high voltage switch Yeah, gear. so you'd need a really high voltage and you'd still only get a small rotation in the polarization due to this Faraday effect. Yeah. Um, so what they're probably doing there is they just shine their laser at their wire with the magnetic field. It could be a bus bar or it could be it anything. Could be, yeah, yeah, high right. voltage stuff. And the laser would get modulated passing through the field and you get a small rotation in the polarization. So when it came back, mm -hmm. you would have a polarization sensitive detector which would have some relations like this. So as you increase the rotation, your sensitivity decreases quite dramatically. So right. you'd be able to get a, an indication of how much field strength you've passed through yep. and then and, and get your measurement from that. And that's how they would get it for that's, DC as well as, 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 well as AC. AC. Yeah, yep. got it. So you don't, need a, don't necessarily need a current on your wire. Just the electrostatic field will probably be enough. So it's similar to how the voltage detection sticks. You'd be very, kind of very close to, Because yeah. they can work with no current yeah. flowing through. Right. And that, you, That's what I think they could be doing. Right. But you'd have to have a look at the patents or yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. They've got some magic going on there. I have to do a search on the patents. Right. 
So it's something to do with Faraday rotation through the air. So the angle of rotation is directly proportional to the verdict constant for air, which is the how, uh, how susceptible it is to be affected by a magnetic field. Right. The magnetic field itself and the distance that it travels in that field. So right. you'd have a maximum distance here, and you'd be able to extract out your field strength, and from there you'd be able to get the voltage on the wire. Neat. It's quite nice. Quite nice. So it's plausible. Plausible. Yeah, we don't uh, have a Mythbuster-style one where we actually chisel it out or something like that. But it is plausible. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I'm gonna nice. have to. There, I'm gonna have to uh, get one. They're gonna have to send it to me. We'll do a tear down and some tests. But um, yeah, I'll have to find some real high voltage, high energy stuff to work on. But I'm sure, that's not a problem. Nice. Thanks, Phil. No worries. See, your PhD it did come in useful. You didn't waste Finally. all those years. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Catch you next time.